All right. Here we go. Bradley and Ben back at it again. Welcome, everyone, back to another episode of Tech Tuesday. My name is Ben. And I'm Bradley. And uh, we're just going to go right into questions for you guys. Um, I think this is episode 31. I lose count. <laughs> I can't really count past five, so that's fair. Um, well, I would hope not. I run you're, out of fingers. You're a te- you're a technician. Well, I guess. I'm just kidding. All right, fair just enough. Kidding. All right, here we go. Um, I'll let you start off with question one, Bradley. I like how we got the hat thing going on. We got we're doing the hat thing today. I got a SEMA hat on. You've oh, got, this is nothing to do with cars. Nothing to do with cars. Aaron Barnes eight nine three eight says, "Let's get some plug and play Hemi stuff, guys." <laughs> <laughs> also, where is the E85 kill shot? What happened to it? Mm, that's a good question. So, I know that we're doing some R&D and some new products and stuff. So, you know, the plug and play, which I'm not really a huge fan of that mm. terminology. Mm. But, you know, we're working on right. some stuff like that. You know, getting into possibly some Coyote and Godzilla mm-hmm. stuff. Yep. And the Hemi, Hemi stuff. Hemi is so. right in there. Yep, yep. It's right in the mix there. Yep. Um, as far as the E85 kill shot goes, that's not necessarily a different unit. Yep. Um, well, what he's cut, what he's getting at is back in the day, we actually released a, a pre-order for a um, for an E85 kill shot um, that was going to be completely and totally self-learned, self-tuned on E85. Now all of our all of our throttle body units can be tuned to support E85. Yep. That's totally completely possible with any of our. Um, I I want to say all of our units doesn't really matter, yeah. um, but specifically with our TBIs, yes, it's an absolute definite thing that you can do. Yep. As far as self learning for it, that is that's also still in the works. Um, but eventually, we do want to get to a point where we have um, self learning for just E85, where mm-hmm. you where all you have to do is. Maybe press a corn logo button. That'd be cool. <laughs> That'd be cool. That would be really cool. But as something of, like that. As of for right now, um, like we've got our test run stands on E85 actually. Yeah. And I'm gonna swap my personal vehicle, which has a Royal Flush, over to E85 as well. Mm. Um, right now, what we're doing is we're just scaling the fuel table appropriately for it, mm-hmm. um, just to have a good injector loop percent and everything. Yep. And then you can make any adjustments you have to accordingly. So that's pretty much where we're at with that. Yep. Um, and if you have any questions about switching over to E85, send tech support an email. Uh, send customer service an email. We'd be happy to walk you through what yeah. that looks like. Angelo uh, B2867. Hey, gentlemen, do you guys plan on uh, plan to add the ability to adjust the fuel deceleration cutoff to the software? I threw lots of timing in to the follow to follow the timing table, and the car still gets super lean on deceleration, and the fuel pulse goes down 1.2 sometimes. Thanks. That's a good question. Yep. I'll leave that to That's you. That's actually something that me and Tim have talked about. Um, you know, I was doing some some road tuning and stuff with my car. I know I keep mentioning my car. <laughs> well, <a> <laughs> I, it's it's refre- I think it's refreshing. Yeah. Like a lot of our a lot of our employees actually just run aces products yeah on their yeah. cars or their kids cars yeah so we've we've actually discussed this and that is something that we're working on in a newer software version um you know it will go a little lean on deceleration just because of the amount of load on the vehicle mm-hmm. and everything you know normally when i'm looking at that kind of stuff i'm looking at the afrs to kind of give me a reference on that um but as far as the actual fuel deceleration cutoff that is something that we're working mm-hmm. on um, you'll see it in the next software version, most likely. Um, it'll be on the website. I know I've said this before mm-hmm. in previous videos that it does include what's in the in software. the next update. On the website, if you look right below it in the smaller text, it will be there mm-hmm. for you. So, yeah. Yeah, that's something that we're working on right now. We actually got a lot of things we're working on. I know we well, say that all the time, but, you know. Well, I think that's the beauty of a smaller company is that yeah. there's always stuff that we're working on oh, yeah. and always yeah. new things that we're incorporating into the software. Mm. Gavin Angston, Angston, 8315, having issues with my hot start on my jackpot Mm. system, having to give it a little throttle to get it going, but cold starts Mm. are fine. Anything I can change in the handheld to fix this. Mm. So normally when we're having starting issues, um, depending on, you know, your engine and things like that, just Mm. for a bit of an example, you know, our uh, LS Swap Blazer, that's outside that we actually use for testing is a 5.3 with a BTR stage 4 cam and, you know, pretty 
common build. And we did that for a reason. Tim did that for a reason so that we can eventually get some calibration data on stuff like that. And just so, you know, when you guys are possibly having anything going on and we bring it in for testing, we're not yeah. testing it on like a bone stock engine because there's a lot that a lot of differences and stuff like yeah. that. You yeah, know? absolutely. So what we normally have to do for that is going into tuning idle and then go to advance and it'll mm. be park air versus ect whether you're running electronic throttle body it'll be etb park air versus ect and mm. if you're running the drive by cable it'll be iac park air versus ect yeah and what you want to do is you want to add val add to each value and it's going like based off the ect so mm. if you're having issues with a hot start you need to go to the right of the table and add air there mm -hmm. so if you're trying to give it throttle for it to start what you're doing is you're opening up the throttle plate and giving it that air that it needs yeah so when you go into that table and you adjust it it's actually compensating for that it's mm -hmm. actually adding air based on that table um to help with startup yeah and a lot of times you know we'll tell people to adjust that left side of the table because normally it's a cold start issue yeah but it does go over further, and you can adjust on the hot hot start. So that's something that I would take a look at there. And if you've already adjusted that, and we need to, you know, dive into some other things like like we normally say, you know, send us an email or a tech call, and we'll we'll get you sorted out yeah. there. All right. You want to go with that one? So we're gonna go. Eric uh, McDowell asks, what O2 sensors are the jackpot system using again? Because he needs to buy one for himself. Um, some backups just to have. Um, we get this sometimes with people running, you know, you know, race setups or, or oftentimes where they use um, things that require sometimes that they burn out of two <laughs> sensors running alcohol or, or something else. Um, but what we use is a Bosch um, LSU 4.9 um, O2 sensor. Usually, usually we just all of our O2 sensors are Bosch O2 mm -hmm. sensors, correct? Um, so that would be what I, uh, look for. Um, so if, if depending on what you're building, um, or using it for, if you just want to have O2 sensors just to have, um, most, most, uh, auto parts stores will have those, uh, Bosch style O2 sensors. I should, I should clarify running alcohol or other types of fuels are not recommended with our systems yet. It doesn't mean that people don't <laughs> try to run up, run those kinds of fuels. Um, so I do. I have had conversations with people at t at shows or whatever, um, carrying extra O2 sensors mm -hmm. because they want to run certain types of fuel, which oh, yeah. is why I said yeah. that. But it's a good thing to have extra. That's for sure. Jimmy O'Donnell on on the Facebook or O'Donnell on the old Facebooks. <laughs> O'Donnell, I believe. Hi all. I have a typical bog down issue with a kill shot when slamming the accelerator like a lot of other people. I've adjusted acceleration correction versus TPS to many different values. Mm. It still acts the same no matter what. I've also took some fuel out and then adjusted the acceleration correction versus TPS. Bit still no luck. Mm. It's a 350 small block mild cam. Fuel pressure is good and everything else seems to function as normal. Any ideas? Thanks. Mm. So this is on the good old Facebooks here and we had our authorized tuner um, from Dirty Dirty Racing, Willie Lynch, the man himself, mm. usually takes a combination of acceleration and rich versus t TPS and adjusting the VE table both in that area. It needs more fuel, question mark. So I don't know if he's asking or something. Yeah. Um, but you can quickly overshoot the Excel enrichment. So that is accurate. We get a lot of people that you know are having this issue mm. and – they think more is better. Well, that's not always the case with this. Yeah. Um, you can definitely overshoot that to the point where it's putting too much fuel in there. Yep. And then it's, as soon as you let off the pedal, it's, you know, catching itself. And that, you know, may be the issue. So you went from it leaning out to it, you know, over fueling it. You can, you can overshoot that, that table pretty quickly. Um, so what he's talking about here, which, you know, if you're not comfortable with the tuning stuff, then, then I would just reach out to him for this. But, um, you know, he's talking about going into a specific area of the fuel table, wherever it's reading at the map and, um, you know, adding fuel in there if it needs more fuel or taking fuel out, depending on what the AFRs are doing and not not quite relying completely on that, you know, acceleration correction table. Mm -hmm. So and I've noticed, too, as well that, you know, sometimes it'll help if you do the map enrich. Yep. Um, because it's it's instead of it just referencing the delta from 
the TPS sensor, like the rate of change from the TPS mm -hmm. sensor, it'll also be referencing the map sensor change as well. Yep. So that that tends to help a little bit, but as far as you know, getting in the software and, and doing some fuel table tuning, that's always going to be king as far as yep. you know making some some fine adjustments yep. because there is you know I've had to go over this through tech calls before where it's the same kind of deal that's going on. But if you notice on those those tables when you're adjusting in the handheld, there's a there's a pretty decent gap in between the points, and you know you could be experiencing that issue, um, whether it be going lean or going rich, in those areas in between. So that's where you know going in there and, and going on the fuel table itself and really taking a look at it would help. Mm. All right, one last question here as we wrap up. Anybody know why my alternator won't charge the battery? This is a question by Adrian Ramirez. Um, it's a pretty common question. Old alternator tested good four times, got it to charge a couple times, and then it wouldn't charge after a couple test drives. I bought a new one and it charged the first couple of starts and drives, but now it won't. I have the um, Holly alternator uh, wire. <laughs> Bleeped out Holly. That's hilarious. Um, That's my kind of guy. Holly alternator wire. The H word. Mm. I should, yeah. Anyway, uh, wire that ran inside the key, um, ran inside to a key on fuse, and it's getting power. That's a, yeah, it's a pretty, I would say, relatively common question, but mm -hmm. again. So with this right here, you know, it says in the instructions and in the wiring schematic that the power EN wire is to go to the alternator to charge it. Mm. And, you know, we still have it on the harness and we're going to keep it in the schematics and everything just for future expansion. So we don't have to reprint everything and yeah. and deal with old harnesses and that kind of deal and kind of work against ourselves in a way. What we're doing now, and I've, I've been over this in a tech call before is running the V main wire. I know we tell people like, oh, don't put that on anything because mm -hmm. it's a 12 volt output wire. Yep. What you can do for that is you can run that 12 volt output wire, the V main, to a relay. Make sure it goes to a relay to clean up that voltage and then run that wire from that relay to the alternator and it will charge the alternator. Yep. Um, right now, the power EN wire is not active on the harness. It's not you know, in the programming or the firmware. Right. So and according to the video, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Um, you know, is, just based off of this, here. you know, if, if there's, you know, I believe that was the, pa the, the, a uh, power EN wire right there. Yeah. But hey everyone. Thanks so much for watching this episode of tech Tuesday. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. If you have comments about EFI or ACES EFI, uh, please feel free to leave a comment down below. We'd be happy to get to that in our next episode of tech Tuesday. And if you see tech Tuesday media anywhere else on social media, feel free to send it some love. And, uh, as always guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see all of you in the next video. This this Tech Tuesday is brought to you by Celsius. Celsius and allergies. <laughs> and coffee. And allergies. <laughs> <laughs> I may stick that at the end.